overdrive. Twenty twenty Ford Mustang Shelby GT five hundred. Oh my God! <laughs> and as you could probably tell. We're in the canyons in California. Ford invited us out for the launch of the Mach-E, the new electric Mustang, and then they sprinkled in some GT500 for us. Which we really appreciate because this is the highest horsepower Ford right now. Yes, it is. It is the most power dense engine in the world. So what that means is it's a 5.2 liter and they got the most horsepower out of it with the supercharger slapped on top. Horsepower and torque. 760 horsepower, 625 pound-feet of torque from a hand-built 5.2 liter V8 with a supercharger on top. And by the way, that supercharger is 2.65 liters. That displacement is more than most four-cylinder engines. <laughs> and this only comes in an automatic transmission. Yeah, so this is a seven-speed dual clutch. You cannot get this in manual. You have to get the GT350 or the GT350R yeah, in manual. Yeah, those only come in manual. Which is pretty bold. I like it. And I feel like what we really need to find out today is if we like the GT500 more than the Hellcat Red Eye, which also only came in automatic. That's right, so we've driven the regular Hellcat wide body manual and we've driven the Red Eye, which again, only comes in automatic. And another car that we haven't actually driven yet, the new C8 Corvette. It'll actually be interesting to see how this competes with that because of the price. Gary, I'm gonna downshift and send. Oh my God, this pulls so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, so since we're in the canyons, let's talk handling. This thing handles better than any other Mustang I've ever driven. Yeah, this thing is like on rails, but it's rear wheel drive, and I feel like it's gonna spin out, but it kind of just doesn't. It feels totally different than like a Hellcat to me, because a Hellcat, every time I floor it, I'm expecting to spin out, so I'm bracing myself mentally that I'm gonna have to correct the steering. This, it just puts the power down, which is totally different. But in my head, when I think red eye competitor, I think spinning out. Yeah, so the biggest difference right off the bat that I've noticed is this actually puts down 760 horsepower, which is a miracle. I don't know how Ford did it, but they did it. So let's talk about drive modes. There are a bunch of them. So if we hit our mode button, we got sport, track, drag strip, slippery, normal, and my mode. And totally different from the regular Mustangs, we can actually control our suspension and our steering from the steering wheel, which is really cool. Yeah, we got two extra buttons there. Yeah, which I absolutely love. So the thing that I noticed is the suspension modes change depending on what mode you're in. So you can't actually get track mode in normal mode. You have to go to track mode to get track suspension. And what kind of damping do they use in this? These are Magna Ride. So there is actually a really big difference between track mode, normal mode, and sport. And even the drag strip mode. Yeah, we haven't actually tested drag strip mode, but apparently what it does is it softens up the back so that you can squat and put the power down. And it is pretty comfortable if you're driving in like the chillest of modes. Oh, absolutely. This is still a Mustang at the end of the day. It's still a big muscle car, sports car. Well, this is the most sports car version of the Mustang. Yeah, because I guess they even have EcoBoost versions and everything. And now like with an electric one coming out, it's kind of a whole different thing than what it used to be. Exactly. But the best part about this one, other than the horsepower, is the exhaust sound. So we have several different exhaust sound modes. So we have an exhaust sound button. So I have exclusively driven in track mode because it sounds absolutely incredible. But let's play a clip of quiet mode to track mode. And the thing about this, just like the Hellcat Red Eye, there is some droning and it does hurt my sensitive ears. So I usually have to wear earplugs while driving this. However, if you drove it in quiet mode, you'd be all right. I'd be all right, but it's like that little bit of droning here and there, I don't want to risk it. But the other thing that I noticed is in here and outside, there's no supercharger sound. Yeah, and I think that's where the red eye kind of has the advantage because like this has a huge supercharger, just make it go wee, but I guess Ford's image is exhaust more than supercharger one. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, in the aftermarket, you can solve that, put a big intake on it and you'll solve that problem right away. And back to that engine. So it is a 5.2 liter, just like the GT350, but the GT350 is a flat plane crank. So it actually revs higher and sounds totally different. This is a cross plane crank. So I think I actually like the GT350 sound better just because it's a little bit more exotic, but this has its own unique violent sound and I absolutely love this as well. Well, this is the track weapon version, which is kind of cliche to say, but it kind of is since it only comes in automatic. And then the GT350 is more of the enthusiast because it only comes in manual. So exactly. I guess that's where the big 
distinction is. Exactly. And you guys may have noticed that I'm not exactly ripping it just because we're on the canyon, so I don't want to die out here. But for being a cross-plane crank, this actually revs pretty high, so it revs to 7,500 RPM. <laughs> oh my God. Yo, know, good thing this has nice big brakes too. <laughs> yeah, the brakes are solid. And what else do we have? Carbon fiber wheels? Yeah, so this has the carbon fiber package, which is very expensive. You get a whole bunch of carbon fiber stuff we can talk about in the looks, but it really helps to go faster. We'll get to the looks soon, but a little bit more handling, again, because we are on the canyons. This thing is very flat for being such a big car, and it's still really comfortable, especially if you put it in normal mode or even sport. Track is a little bit too stiff for the canyons. But steering-wise, it is kind of light. Yeah, the steering feel is definitely lighter than I would have liked it, even in sport mode. I kind of want to put more effort into it because it's such a heavy duty car. Yeah, I totally agree. And then the other thing is seven speed dual clutch. How fast is this shift? So fast, like ridiculously fast. Would I like a manual in this? Absolutely, but this is a very good automatic you because know, it is a dual clutch. I'm all right with stopping manuals at a certain amount of horsepower. It's like, look, we're trying to set a record with this one. It's for fast. You wanna have fun, get this other one, which is also very fast. I also totally agree. But the craziest thing that Chevy has ever done is put a manual into the ZR1 of the last generation. That was pretty wild. Yeah, I guess somebody's gotta go above and beyond. Pretty much. And then end all manual transmissions and Corvettes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think it's time to get you into the driver's seat. But first, we know a lot of you guys are watching without subscribing. Do us a favor, hit the subscribe button so I can do a burnout. I'm gonna send it. Send it. <laughs> so if you did fully hook up, it would have been a 3.3 seconds to 60 miles per hour. This thing is really fast, but I feel like it's not supercar fast, which I understand it's not a supercar. It's not a supercar price either. But I expect it to be a little closer to like the McLaren feeling. This is still silly fast, but I know what you're saying. It's that, I think it's that three seconds. If it was like three seconds flat, it would feel like a supercar. But I guess the Challenger Hellcat Red, I felt a little better to me when I was ripping it. But I think that's because I knew it was gonna slip. If it hooked up, it would probably feel exactly the same. Probably, but it pretty much never hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, not a chance. So starting with the looks, I guess the big question is, do you like the looks of the 500 more than the 350? I don't. This is way more aggressive and crazy looking, but personally, I like the 350 more. That's the sweet spot. I totally agree, but starting with the front end, they had to add way more intake because it needs so much more air. Yeah, so it's got 50% more air intake openings than the GT350. And when it first got launched, I thought it looked kind of weird, like the way it came down, just like a big stupid opening or something. But the more I looked into older GT500s, there's a couple where it looks exactly like it. So I think it is kind of a good throwback as well. And it's just a really aggressive front end and I love that Cobra badge right in the front. Yeah, it, it's cool because it is a Mustang, but there's like no Mustang badges. Yeah, and Cobra is like one of the coolest badges in the car game. Yeah, definitely snake related cars are super cool. Like we got the Viper, we got the Cobra. I don't know what else there is, but we've got a buddy with a Cobra. We call him Cobra Phil since high school. <laughs> he was thinking of getting a Viper. That's such an easy way to get the new nickname. Yeah, Cobra exactly. Phil to Viper Phil. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's still Snake. Still Snake Phil. <laughs> But the front has a lot of vents and intakes everywhere. It's so sharp and it kind of angles out and towards the ground. Yeah, and then we have that lip spoiler at the front that says Shelby. We got the little GT500 embossed in the front grille. And that's pretty much it on the front that says Shelby or GT500. I think that's like everywhere in the car besides this little plaque on the interior. Yeah, that's right. The headlights are normal Ford Mustang headlights. We've got a nice like mesh grille, which I really like. And then we've got a pretty crazy looking hood with a massive heat extractor vent thing at the top. And to open the hood, you actually have a normal hood latch inside, but then you have hood pins that you actually have to press in. It's definitely one of the coolest things about this car because race car gimmicks are always the best. And when you open that hood, what do you get? You have the hand-built sign plaque for whoever built this engine. And then that hood vent up at the top, I actually noticed that it says you're supposed to remove that for the track, but keep it in for the road so that you get extra heat dissipation on the track, which is really cool. And I love how easy and clear the sticker is to understand. Yeah, yeah. Race track out. Road check mark. And then as an overall look, what do you think of this paint color? Oh, the paint color is great. I like the green more, but this is a cool orange. Yeah, this orange is really nice. I do like the green more as well. And you said something to me about I, the racing stripes. I like Shelby racing stripes now, but I think it's because I needed to drive one first. A real Shelby. Not a Shelby truck. Yeah, to, like, <laughs> to really be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one of the stripe guys, I go fast. 
And this is one of the few cars that if I had to own, I would potentially get it in blue with the white stripes. Oh really? It's like I, the classic Shelby. I know. Once you get behind the wheel, everything changes. And this one has a really expensive carbon fiber track package on it. So we actually have carbon fiber wheels. Yeah, and that's like the craziest part. I don't think we've driven a car with carbon fiber wheels yet. Yeah, we haven't. I'm sure the wheels are much lighter and there's probably a noticeable difference between this and the regular wheels, but we haven't been able to directly compare the performance difference. But they look so badass. Yeah, you tell people you got carbon fiber wheels and you look at them, like the weave and everything, amazing. And then you can see those big Brembo brakes, which always look awesome. Yeah, so they're actually better than the ones that are on the GT350. And then what would be the Continental recommended tire for Ford Mustang Shelby GT500? The Extreme Contact DWS 06, and if you happen to be driving in the winter, the Viking Contact 7s. Highly recommend drivers in the winter. <laughs> so side view, it's pretty much a normal Mustang. Except we have some crazy little additions like a skirt package with like an extra thing from the track package. I, I like it. The more extra stuff that's functional, I think it's better. Yeah, like this looks like a race car. Like this, this was purpose built to just be a race car. Do you think it was purpose built for these canyons or uh, is it a little too narrow here? It's a big car and placing it everywhere seems to be totally fine, but yeah, I mean, the canyons are kind of built more for like a Miata. Yeah, I would definitely prefer a Miata here. Yeah. And other than that, on the side, you can see the gigantic carbon fiber wing straight from the GT4 Mustang race car. And that's one of the options that comes with the carbon fiber package, or else you get a different spoiler, which also looks pretty cool. Yeah, that one kind of looks better, but this is the one you want. <laughs> and moving around to the back, big, fat exhaust tips, totally real. Ford won the exhaust tip game. And they also lost it with... With the Explorer ST and the Lincoln Aviator. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones with the exhaust tips that rear the air to the bottom so it doesn't make the tips dirty. And so Ford has the best tips in the game and also the worst tips in the game. Congratulations. <laughs> and we got some triangles and stuff going on back there. Yeah, overall, I mean, it's still a Mustang with a lot of cool stuff, so it's not like that crazy. Yeah. But it's definitely the craziest one. Oh yeah, this is so aggressive looking. So looks wise, this or the Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye? I really like the wide body Hellcats. Like, I really like them. They, they edge out this just by a little bit, but I think this is a very close second. Yeah, this looks more race car. So if you want it to look more race car, you go for this one. If you just want to look kind of like a badass, I would just go with the Hellcat Red Eye. Yeah, like especially the headlights on the Hellcat Red Eye, they're more menacing than this, even though this is very menacing. Yeah. I, I want to <laughs> see, I want to see Dave from Ford and Ralph Shields from FCA, yeah. go at it with the red eye against the Shelby GT500, and they can decide who wins that battle. Yeah, shout out Dave Parasak from Ford. We met him, that guy is an absolute legend. He told us the coolest stories. Speaking of, one of the stories he told us was about line lock. So yes, this does have line lock to enable you to do burnouts, and he was the reason that that actually got implemented into Mustangs. So thank you very much. And a lot of other stuff that none of us know about, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, that was the one thing we were able to get out of him. And I guess I'll chime in quickly about handling and everything. This just feels perfect through here. Yeah. So we have a Torsen LSD in the back and that just helps you put power down through all these corners. I know confidence inspiring is a very easy way out of describing this, but it really is. And before we move on to the interior, I wanna talk about some pop culture stuff with the GT500. So we all pretty much learned to love it from Gone in 60 Seconds, Nicolas Cage, and let's ride. Yeah, that was my dream car for the longest time, Eleanor. I thought it was super cool. I never thought it was as cool as they made it out to be, but apparently that wasn't even a real GT500. Like, No, they made Eleanor for the movie. Which is like actually pretty cool in itself. Yeah. And then they also had a nice Shelby GT500 in Need for Speed. Yeah, super wide body. I love that one. I think that's my new favorite because I think this one would be so much cooler if it was a little bit more wide. Because that's like a no rules car. It's like if we could just like not have to deal with anything, what would it look like? Yeah, that looks amazing. I think if they just made this a little bit wider, kind of took like the Hellcat Red Eye wide body stuff and added it to this, I think that would look pretty cool. And as we're ripping through these canyons, we have actually had to stop for gas because this has such a small tank and it gets terrible fuel economy, which we never complain about because it is a GT500, but the tank is so small that we had to stop. Yeah, which like, I wish the tank was bigger. I don't mind the fuel economy. Yeah, exactly. It's not the fuel economy that's the problem. It's the tank that's too small. Oh, and when they brought back Knight Rider, they tried to make that the Shelby from the 2000s as well. Yeah, I actually remember watching that show. I have no cares for that at all. I'm not attached to it in any way. No, me neither. So let's talk about this interior. First thing I see, 
carbon fiber on the dash and I absolutely love that. This is the first one we've driven that doesn't have the grinded steel look. Yeah, exactly. And this is also the first Mustang we've driven that's automatic. Yes, it is. And it's probably the best one to drive that's automatic. <laughs> yeah, and like if every Mustang transmission that was auto was this good, I would be happy, but I'm not sure they are. So let's talk about those paddles. They feel great and they shift so quickly. Yes, they're nice big metal paddles. Probably top of the game for American muscle cars. Yeah, I'd say that. Definitely better than the Corvette, even though the Corvette had yellow ones. And then we also have this dinky little shifter thing, which is also on the Ford GT. Yeah, that's kind of lame. Like the Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye's got a real shifter, which is definitely a lot cooler, but this gets out of the way, it's fine. And everything up front with the gauges and the dash is all the same as every other Mustang. Except, well, the Ford Mustang logos are now Cobras, and we have a Cobra button on the steering wheel instead of a Mustang button. Which is pretty gangster. <laughs> but you know what? We don't know if this will pass the visor test. Yeah, we don't. Three, two, one. Yes! Full pass. Good job, Ford. And the cup holder test, we don't have a coffee. It fits a bottle of water. I think it would pass with a small coffee. And this is still not a hatchback, but there is a hatchback electric Mustang with four doors that just came out, so we'll box test that when we get the chance. Yes, the Mach-E, which we'll talk about a little bit later. These Recaro seats are so comfortable and so well bolstered. Yeah, no issues with them at all. They are super comfortable. They look cool too, and they've got Recaro written on the side, and we've got some matching stitching and patterns on the armrest area. And you may have noticed by now, we don't have any rear seats because this is the track package. Yes, it gets deleted with the track package, and they even like put a little sticker there to tell you not to try to sit there. So. Jacob, hop in the back, how's the room? Oh, it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> so we've got the same old gauge cluster as all the other Mustangs, which I love to customize with different colors, and I love the track mode version the most because the RPMs go left to right and it's super easy to see. And for the infotainment, it's a slightly updated one, more similar to the Lincoln Aviator that we recently drove. So it does have Apple CarPlay, it does have Android Auto, and it does have rewinding satellite radio stations, but no tune mix. There you go. So before we get to the price, let's quickly dig into the Ford Mustang electric four-door SUV, which sounds like a bald tires article. So it's called the Mach-E, which is weird to say. It sounds like Mach-E, like, I don't know. Anyways, it's a cool name, but it's associated with Mustang, which is kind of weird, but a lot of the people that worked on the GT500 actually worked on the Mach-E, so they got all the people in the company that were excited about Mustang to work on the Mach-E, which is pretty cool. And they showed us the pre-presentation like three days before the actual launch of it, which we still haven't been to yet. We're gonna show you some footage from it. I think they did that because you need to take it in and just like talk it out with the other journalists, get all the anger out, and then accept it because it makes sense from a company standpoint. Yeah, it's a weird thing and I still haven't fully absorbed it. You gotta think of it like this. The F-Type is a really cool Jaguar, right? The F-Pace is an SUV version that looks exactly the same. Are you mad at the F-Pace? No. Exactly, so you just need to not be mad over the electric Mustang SUV. So hit me with the price of this 2020 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. Since we're in America, this starts at $70,300. US. Starting at $94,675 Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> price for this particular one that we're driving is $91,795 US. I totally get it. It's a lot of money, but I also totally get it. It's got a higher horsepower number than the Ford GT. Yeah, it's the most powerful car they've ever built horsepower wise. And that's totally awesome because like that doesn't happen all the time. No, exactly. And it's cool that it actually splits the difference between the Hellcat and the Hellcat Red Eye. It's right in the middle. So after driving this, are you kind of interested in getting an older GT500? Yeah, I've actually been researching them ahead of this trip because I kind of want a 2005 to 2009 generation. GT500 would be cool, but even just a regular GT. All right, I gotta floor one more time real quick. Send it. Yeah, I don't even know if I would take a red eye over this anymore. Yeah, like this just puts the power down. That's the biggest difference. I think if you want to be faster on a track, you take this. And if you want to just do more wild burnouts and stuff, you get the red eye. But I mean, this is totally capable of doing burnouts as well. So let us know in the comments what you guys think. This or the Challenger Hellcat red eye or the regular Challenger Hellcat. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, patreon.com slash join our YouTube membership and check out Teespring for some sick swag.